Welcome back to Zach's Lab, and today I have my DIY vacuum filter. So most of the time, a real glass professional vacuum filter would look something like this. It would have a glass funnel on the top with a glass fritted filter down here. Uh, some sort of extension coming off under the filter where there's a vacuum connector running in. Uh, sometimes this is the neck of a Erlenmeyer flask. Um, in my case, mine is screwable, but in most professional cases it is uh, ground glass fitting. And then it goes down into some sort of container. Most of the time that is some sort of flask, generally an Erlenmeyer flask. Um, but in my case it is a empty pasta sauce jar. Um, all of this was made with materials that I just scavenged around the house. Here at the top we have a cut off top of a 2 liter soda bottle. Um, inside is a little bit of plastic I found from some packaging. Um, here we have a pill bottle that I actually cut off the top and inserted a bottle cap in so you can screw this into the top, all of which is uh, secured with hot glue so it doesn't go anywhere. This is some old uh, aquarium tubing from a fish tank I used to have and then it goes down into a empty, uh, in this case it is a uh, pasta sauce jar or you can use a pickle jar or any other kind of glass jar that you may have laying around the house. And on the side of the jar, I marked where there is a 250 milliliter and uh, 500 milliliter uh, lines. I just used that by taking something that I knew had 250 milliliters, dumped it in, marked the water line, dumped it in again, marked the water line. And uh, simple addition can find that out. To get a little bit more of an up close view of this, as you can see, this top is where I had the uh, 2 liter bottle cut off. Inside of here, there is just a piece of plastic hot glued around the edges, so it is suspended above the funnel. And then I took a screwdriver and poked a bunch of holes in it. These are the frits on the fritted filter that allow air to pass through here and suck things through when you put a filter paper in. When you come down here, you see we have the cut off pill bottle and there is an aquarium tubing going into it. As you can see, the aquarium tubing comes slightly in. This prevents things from actually getting sucked into the aquarium tubing. It's just the air. This comes down here attached to the pasta sauce jar lid, goes down into the jar itself. Now obviously I'm not going to sit here and suck in through this because that would be dangerous and I don't feel like dying today. So you need a vacuum source. In my case, that is this. This is actually a pump used to inflate an air mattress. Uh, I found it in the closet, completely free to me, um, but I just made a couple modifications. Normally this hose would be hooked here, because this is the output of the pump. It blows air this way, but it sucks it in through this hole here. So what I did was I took the hose off of this and attached it to where it sucks in the air, and then secured it with some electrical tape to make sure that there was no uh, leakage. And I also secured up here uh, by the nozzle with some electrical tape just to make sure there's no leakage up there too. And I blunted the tip on here so it's easier to fit inside of this. So now, when I turn this on, it'll suck air through this nozzle and blow it out here. On the actual filter, the blunted tip fits very nicely right into here. Like so. Give it a little push and it fits very nicely into the aquarium tubing because it's about the same diameter. Then you just flip on the pump. It sucks the air through here, out here, through this line, into it, and blows it out here. And another feature with this is because of this kind of ribbed cord here, it actually will catch any liquids in these. So if liquid would get sucked out of the pump in here, through into here, it would actually get caught in these little ribs here before it actually got to the pump and did anything to it. So that's just a little added bonus. Now to actually filter things, you need a filter paper of some kind. In my case, uh, Coffee filters are the most cheap and readily accessible one, and it works pretty well in most applications. 
I specifically designed the depth of the funnel from the tip down to the fritz to be about the exact same as a coffee filter. And a coffee filter works great in this situation. Now to actually filter something, generally you'll have some sort of liquid and some sort of unsoluble uh, or insoluble material in that liquid. In this case, I'm going to use some of the zinc that we had left over from our zinc processing video from the alkaline batteries. If you just dump that in, give a little swirl around. As you can see, I didn't get all the barium out, but mostly. Then, you'll actually take this, dump it into the top, and a vacuum connector here will actually suck all the air out. So now that we have our zinc in suspension inside of this liquid, because zinc as a metal is not soluble in water, I can demonstrate the vacuum pulling the water through but not the zinc. So if we take our filter paper, pop it back to the top, we can hook up our vacuum line right into the aquarium tubing, turn it on, and we can dump our zinc into the top. Now as you can see, the rate that it was coming through before gravity, I left a little bit of water in here at the bottom on purpose to show the rate of gravity is significantly less than that of when the vacuum was running. Now a bunch of the zinc got stuck in the bottom while that was running, so I gave it a little squirt with a wash bottle and got all that zinc in, but as you can see, the vacuum, though it still wasn't as fast as a professional vacuum, significantly reduced the time that it would take to pull all that water through and into here. Here I'm just going to have an example of just water getting pulled through the filter. Now one more thing I wanted to show while we were on the topic of filters is how a filter does not remove things that are dissolved in a solvent. So in our case we have some uh, red dye which is going to um, signify the solvent. In this case the red dye is phenol red and I have some water to dissolve it in. Um, a little quick tip, uh, to get a filter paper to stick to the inside of your filtration apparatus better, just spray it with a little bit of water before you do it. It's really not going to mess with anything. Now we're going to make a about 0.1 molar solution here of phenol red and water. I'm just going to give it a couple squirts. Now we have our solution. Give it a little stir. Now as you can see the water is slightly dyed red, and I will turn on the vacuum. As you can see, after the vacuum pump ran, the water on the bottom is still the same color. And the filter paper on a white background is not dyed red. Because this dye was dissolved in the solvent, which was water in our case. The water solvent carried it through the filter paper. Now obviously not everyone probably has access to a uh, air pump like I do, but if you've ever bought an air mattress or like an inflatable exercise ball, you may have gotten one of these, which is an air pump that is basically the same thing, just manual. 
Now something like this might be a little less practical to someone who probably doesn't have an air pump like this on hand. These do cost money, but something that you may get for free with another product is one of these, which is an inflatable, um, like an inflatable air mattress inflator or a like exercise ball. And it's just a little floor pump that sucks air in and blows it out that way, just like the electric one is just manual. Now, if you take the output, pop it off, and slide it on to the input, now you have the exact same thing I had with the electric inflator, just manual. Now, when you connect it, in my case, the connectors fit precisely. What I would do is take this nice long hose. Now, I can pump it by foot. To demonstrate this, I'll take a filter paper, pop it in the top, and we'll suck some water through. This is the gravity filtration rate, which is pretty slow, but when you use your floor pump, you can suck it through significantly quicker. Show that again. Gravity rate. Pump rate. Though this is obviously not as efficient as an electric pump, and it is a little bit more physically tiring, it still works just about as well. Now this tool here is obviously a great laboratory tool to have. Filtering is a very large part of chemistry and it generally takes a lot of time when it's just done by simple gravity filtration. An apparatus like this that can pull through a significantly larger amount of volume of uh, liquid than gravity is a great time saver and doing it in a DIY way like this saved me money. Instead of paying 60 to to $100 for a professional made glass uh, vacuum filtration, I spent zero dollars. This is all stuff that I already had around the house. If you factor in the like fifteen dollars for the pump and maybe like five dollars for materials I spent, that is still like a factor of five less than it would make a professional one. This one also has about a 250 milliliter volume where a professional one can usually range from there up to a liter or down to a hundred milliliters. So I think this, for its value, is a very good way of getting a high quality vacuum filter without having to break the bank. Now obviously something like this is a lot more accessible to a lot of the amateur chemists because me included a lot of amateur chemists don't have a lot of expendable money to pay for an actual vacuum filtration apparatus. This was just something I made from things around the house and I very much strongly encourage you to do it so yourself. Though I did come up with all of this on my own, I give you any right you would like to make this yourself. Obviously you may have a different connector tube here, a different type of jar, a different funnel, different type of tubing, different pump, it doesn't matter. I really just want to make some of the bigger lab tools more accessible to the amateur. Other lab tools that I have made in the past, I have um, electric stirrers for beakers and flasks. I have a filter that I use to create purified water to use in my experiments. All of this is purified, it's not just tap water. It isn't a distillation apparatus, it's a gravity charcoal filter which removes a considerable majority of any um, different ions or things that might be in there that interfere with the reaction, so it is technically deionized water. I also have a homemade centrifuge for centrifuging things that are in suspension, um, a plethora of different homemade safety things. I have homemade eye wash and uh, first aid stations, as well as a homemade fire extinguisher. And these will all have their own videos in the future, but at the time that I'm making this, those videos aren't up yet. Thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate you watching it. I hope that you can make something like this for yourself if you're an amateur chemist in need of a vacuum filter. Also, don't be afraid to play around with things around the house. You could definitely find a way to make more sophisticated things. In my case, all different types of jars actually make great beakers and flasks to use, which is a lot cheaper than buying a glassware set.
Again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider subscribing and uh, give it a thumbs up if you'd like it or a thumbs down if you didn't. I enjoy the feedback. Thank you and see you in the next video.